Hello, my name is Paul Stewart and I'm in my hotel at London Heathrow Airport where I'm about to test out the British Airways 767 Economy Class or Euro Traveller as they call it product through to Athens. BA short haul fleet consists mostly of Airbus A320s and their derivatives and because BA are about to retire their 767s I jumped at the opportunity to fly in one for potentially the last time. So I'll talk a little bit about the 767 as well as reviewing their economy class product and spoiler alert, it was disappointing. Now I didn't include the boarding footage for a few reasons. Now firstly, you could see the crew and when I'm being negative I don't like to show faces. Also, I got far too much footage of my neighbour's face and his kids so I figured I should edit that out. And uh, he's, he was from a country that tends to sue everyone, so. Now before we head off, let's quickly look at the seat which frankly is pretty self-explanatory. It's showing its age but that was fair enough as the aircraft was about to be retired. One reason why the 767s were great was because even in economy they had two seats next to the window. These were ideal for couples or if you simply like a window view and you only had to climb over one stranger to get to the aisle. Now I really love this view at Heathrow of the Union Jacks all lined up. In fact I really quite like BA in general which is why I'm going to give an honest assessment because otherwise they're not going to change. I feel slightly awkward whinging because us Aussies always talk about whinging poms, which they are. It's been proven by science and stuff, mostly because they're no good at cricket. Not that Australians cheat or anything like that. When in fact, flying is actually an incredible privilege, and the fact that you can fly through the air in a tin can is quite magic. It's just unfortunate that BA have lost the magic that they actually spread throughout the world only a few decades ago. Anyway, let's head off to the runway and listen to the Rolls-Royce RV211s explode Avgas into music. Now BA don't offer any complimentary food or drink in economy class even though this flight is three hours long, which seems very Ryanair. I guess the thinking might be that a lot of meals on board aren't great anyway, so maybe they could charge a little more and provide a properly decent meal. Seems reasonable, so here's what I got. A toasty, which cost five pounds, and a New Zealand Sav Blanc, which cost five and a half pounds for a total of ten and a half pounds. Good maths. Now that's not cheap. In fact, it's like a quarter of New Zealand's GDP, and it didn't look like anything in the photos. I also thought that maybe because the crew won't be busy handing out meals to everyone, the service might be better. Instead, I actually had to flag down someone to order some food after they almost ran through the cabin, clearly hoping no one ordered anything. Anyway, after that, I sat back to enjoy the in-flight entertainment, which was far more interesting out the window, keeping an eye on the busy European airspace. Look, in the end of the day, I did travel 2,500 kilometres in comfort, which is pretty cool. I always find that the larger wide body aircraft are smoother in rougher weather. I've had some amazing flights with BA with awesome service. Check out my review of the 777 flight from London to Doha in the video description below. And because of this, I know that they can do so much better. The crew seemed really disinterested and you could hear them chatting in the galley the entire flight. While I'm all for them enjoying their job, the fact that they made very little effort to engage with passengers kind of defeats the purpose of their job. And as I said, the food wasn't cheap or particularly good. So I think it's probably all about expectations. As a full service carrier, BA kind of struggle. But if you compare them with low cost carriers, they're probably actually pretty good because at least they offer lounge access if you have status with One World Airlines. So there you are, my friend has been turned upside down. British Airways, the best low cost carrier.
Although they're quite pricey, which defeats the purpose of the low cost carrier. Highest low cost carrier. Uh, this isn't working. Uh, let's just land the plane. Anyway, I tried to be positive. All jokes aside, flying is a total privilege, and it's just sad that BA have really dropped the ball, like the English cricket team. To think BOAC Comets introduced the world to jet airliners and the Concorde really needs no description. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more similar videos. I've got heaps of flying coming up with Malaysian Qatar Lufthansa, ANA and Qantas. Thanks for watching this video on the Euro Traveller or Economy Class flight from London to Athens, which was awesome to visit by the way, with British Airways, the best low cost carrier in the world. That's definitely going to catch on.